Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. That's right, babies, rlmradio.xyz and reallibertymedia.com and a host of other places. That's where the Grim Leftovers Show goes to, all kinds of wonderful places that you can find the stream as well as right there on RealLibertyMedia.com on the Grim Leftovers show page. So, welcome. It is January 13, 2020. This is uh, episode 54 of the Grim Leftovers show. And, you know, I've been putting there in my blogs about this is week 1, week 2, week 3, week 12, whatever. But I find that this week, I mean this year, the, the week started... Too early, because when I, when I well, well, when I look at my calendar over there on my Linux machine, it shows this being week three, but it's only the thirteenth, and that's because where it started. So I'll be changing that instead of calling it week one or week two, it'll be show one, show two of whatever year. So for going forward, that not that's something important, but just something I thought I'd share with y'all. Uh, <laughs> So, um, yeah, let me put it in the chat there that I am on, to, you know, just in case somebody doesn't know or, or whatever. Uh, but, but yeah, I'm on here. Um, anyway, to uh, wrap up a, a topic that I was talking about last week, not a story, not a news story of any kind, uh, but last week I had mentioned that uh, uh, my garage door thingy broke, uh, and then I talked about it again uh, fairly extensively on Friday night during the Frickers Ball. I just wanted to let y'all know that not that anybody cares other than me, but it's all fixed and working again. So it's terrific. So just uh, doing a little follow-up closeout there on uh, that. So, uh, yeah, hooray for me. <laughs> As I mentioned to, to Moose Girl, I don't know if I said it on air or not, but I could write me a book, you know, the uh, book, the uh, uh, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Repair. I could do Zen and the Art of Garage Door Opener Repair. Just a thought. <laughs> I learned a lot about garage door openers. More than I ever wanted to know. Oh, boy. Uh, anything else interesting going on in my personal life? Not really. Uh, just kind of cruising along doing stuff. You know, it's, it's 2020. 2020, how's your vision? Seeing things well? In this 2020? I hope so. All right, I got a bunch of stories lined up here for you today. Um, oh, there was, I, I did want to mention once again the, the Brave browser. Uh, if you're using the Brave browser, you can now tip Real Liberty Media via the Real Liberty Media page or the rlmradio.xyz page or on our Twitter account or on our Shoutcast, I mean, not Shoutcast, um, <laughs> YouTube account. Yeah, yeah, maybe there's a way to do it through Shoutcast too. I just have, I haven't really figured it all yet, uh, all out yet. But yeah, you, if you're on one of those pages, if you're familiar with the Brave browser, there's a little little thing up top there. It looks like a triangle. It is a triangle, and you click that, and it'll tell you, "Hey, Real Liberty Media is a uh, verified content provider or whatever," and uh, send them a tip. <laughs> so if you're not using the Brave browser, go ahead and use the Brave browser. Uh, oh, I, I also should mention, because I mentioned a few weeks ago back on uh, the Freakers Ball Show uh, about this Dissenter browser. And I am going to now, at this point in time, recommend against using that browser. I don't trust it. I don't like it. I, I, I think something hinky about the Dissenter browser. Even though it's supposedly ba ba based upon Brave, it comes from Gab.ai, and I don't, tr I don't like Gab.ai at all. Uh, anyway, I had some problems with uh, that browser, and uh, just suffice it to say that I will recommend not using Dissenter uh, because of that. Uh, Moose Girl says she is not able to play vids on the Brave browser. Well, there's a, there might be a trick or two I, I could show you, but not right now. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Let us get into it. I got a bunch of stories lined up, as I say. Uh, this first story from ZeroHedge.com, posted on January 22nd of this year, 
And I like this story because I am one. What upstanding citizens believe versus what I or other crazy conspiracy theorists believe. See, I, 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 I am a member of the crazy conspiracy, conspiracy theorist tribe. I have uh, industrial grade tinfoil hats. You betcha. <laughs> Oh, okay. Other people are having st different other things. Brave has a lot of um, security features built in uh, that, well, you, you have to tell it where to and where not to use those security features. Uh, and and it's really simple to do. The, the little uh, picture of the lion up there in the uh, address bar there, just right-click on it and tell it to shut Brave Shields off on, on uh, whichever site you're having trouble with. Um, and and that's that should fix right up. But uh, anyway, here we go. Crazy, stupid conspiracy theorists believe a mature worldview requires skepticism toward power. Makes perfect sense to me. Smart, upstanding citizens like Hansel believe. <laughs> The government is your friend, and the media are its helpers. Yes, that's what they believe. That's what they think. <laughs> they think government is your friend, and the media is is its helpers in helping you right along. Uh, by the way, this was posted by uh, Caitlin Johnstone uh, on Medium.com, and it was brought over here to Zero Hedge. Uh, crazy, stupid conspiracy theorists believe that powerful people sometimes make immoral plans in secret. You think? Oh, smart, upstanding citizens believe that TV always tells the truth and that the CIA exists for no reason. Crazy, stupid conspiracy theorists believe that extreme government secrecy makes it necessary to discuss possible theories about what might be going on behind that veil of opacity. Those smart, upstanding citizens, however, believe that just because the world dominating government was the most powerful military in the history of civilization, civilization has no transparency and zero accountability to you, the public, that doesn't mean you've got to get all paranoid about it. <laughs> Crazy, stupid conspiracy theorists believe it's okay, it's fine to ask questions about important events that happen in the world. Huh. Ask questions. Uh, it seems fine to me. Even if their government tells them they shouldn't. Yes. The more they say not to ask questions, the more questions I'm going to be asking. Smart, upstand upstanding citizens believe everything they need to know about reality comes out of Mike Pompeo's angelic mouth. Crazy, stupid conspiracy theorists believe the very rich sometimes engage in nefarious behavior to expand their wealth and power. <laughs> yeah, yes, they do. Smart, upstanding citizens believe billionaires always conduct themselves with the same values that got them their billions in the first place. Honesty, morality, and generosity. Crazy, stupid conspiracy theorists believe it's important to remember the lies that led up to the invasion of Iraq and the disastrous consequences of blind faith in government claims. Smart, upstanding citizens believe Iraq is a fictional land similar to Narnia or Middle Earth from the writings of fantasy author named George Galloway. Crazy, stupid conspiracy theorists believe Syria is fighting to avoid becoming another Libya in a war of defense against extremist proxy armies of the United States centralized empire who were given billions of dollars in military support with the goal of toppling Damascus. I've said that many, many times. However, 
smart, upstanding citizens believe Bashar al-Assad is a real-life version of a cartoon supervillain who just started murdering civilians willy-nilly in 2011 because he loves murdering citizens. Then in 2015, his good buddy Vladimir Putin joined in because he loves murdering civilians also. <laughs> Crazy, stupid conspiracy theorists believe the extensive history of the United States government lies means you should always demand mountains of independently verifiable evidence when they make claims about unabsorbed nations. Smart, upstanding citizens believe Russians literally committed an act of war on the United States in 2016, China is orchestrating a second holocaust, Maduro is deliberately starving the Venezuelan people because he hates them, Assad is using chemical weapons, but only when it makes no strategic sense, Cuban spy crickets are trying to assassinate U.S. diplomats, there's Novichik everywhere, and every non-compliant party in the Middle East is secretly working for Iran. <laughs> Crazy, stupid conspiracy theorists believe that it can be difficult to figure out what's going on in mass media landscape that is saturated with propaganda of the U.S. centralized empire. Smart, upstanding citizens believe that all you need to do to ensure you're getting all the facts is watch television and run screaming from the room if you accidentally flip past RT. Crazy, stupid conspiracy theorists believe the Gulf of Tonkin, Tonkin incident was faked. The taking babies out of incubators narrative was a lie. Saddam had no weapons of mass destruction. Gaddafi's rape armies never existed. And the Libya intervention was never really about humanitarian concerns. Smart, upstanding citizens believe it's better just not to think about such things. Crazy, stupid conspiracy theorists believe the latest Wikipedia publications of internal OPCW documents provide ample evidence. Uh, not Wikipedia, WikiLeaks, excuse me. I was like, what? Wait, that can't be right. Oh, WikiLeaks publications. <laughs> Scratch that whole idea of Wikipedia anywhere. Uh, uh, unless you're one of those upstanding citizens. Uh, the OPCW documents provide ample evidence that we were lied to about the 2018 Doma incident. The smart, stand upstanding citizens believe those documents aren't real because the New York Times never reported on them. Crazy, stupid conspiracy theorists believe that increasing levels of government secrecy are making it easier for government agencies to do unethical things in secret. Smart, upstanding citizens believe that questioning your government makes you a Russian anti-Semite. <laughs> crazy, 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 stupid conspiracy theorists believe that the, uh, the billionaire class, which owns the mass media, has a natural incentive to prop up the status quo upon which it is built, and so construct the environment where reporters are incentivized to always support the establishment line. Smart, upstanding citizens believe that if that kind of conspiracy were really happening, it would have been on CNN. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, y'all break out your uh, tinfoil hats and strap them on tightly because, well, not all y'all. I mean, Hansel, he's here. Hansel! <laughs> you smart, upstanding citizen. He's not tuned in, by the way, but he's here. I wouldn't know if he was tuned in. I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would feel a disturbance in the force. <laughs> Ah, we love you, Hansel, really. Well, not we. Just just me and Goober. <laughs> All right. You, got, you, li you live in Arizona. You got kids. Are you sending them, sending them to a public school? 
Do you love the flag of the United States of America? Well, then you're all good. If that last part doesn't apply to you, eh, you might want to consider doing a little bit of homeschooling uh, or, or, or moving to another state or something. I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's something along those lines. Howdy, Dan. How you doing? Because Arizona bill would require students to say the Pledge of Allegiance. It would require it, demand it, force it upon them. This posted on uh, WFLA.com via the Associated Press, December 4th, 2019. An Arizona lawmaker wants to make it harder for school children to avoid saying the Pledge of Allegiance in the morning. Because, you know, that magic sky flag rag, oh, it it has to have the children's allegiance, uh, or else it just feels bad. Republican Representative John Fillmore of Apache Junction introduced legislation that would require students to recite the pledge each morning unless a parent excuses them. And then that parent will be excoriated in as many ways as possible. Schools would be required to set aside at least a minute every day for quiet reflection and moral reasoning. Moral reasoning. Yes. <laughs> a minute. A minute a day <laughs> for moral reasoning. Arizona schools are required... Uh, are currently required designate time for students to recite the pledge if they wish, but the law does not require participation. The ACLU said the proposal is unconstitutional. Governor Doug Ducey uh, said Tuesday that he was not aware students aren't required to say the pledge. He said he, he doesn't comment on the pending le legislation, but he thinks it's a good idea to recite the pledge. Uh, I'm a fan of the Pledge of Allegiance, he told reporters. I would be hopeful that all of our kids, especially our kids in grade school, would begin each day pledging their allegiance to that magical rag. Fillmore's bill may be considered after legislature convenes in January. I don't know when their legislature is reconvening or not, but uh, holy hell. <laughs> oh, baby! <laughs> uh, oh, I, I just, I just need to mention to y'all. I need to mention. Uh, I, I just seen the number seven in the chat. It had nothing to do with I, what it brought to my mind. But tomorrow, the fourteenth of January, two thousand twenty. Uh, is the final update from Microsoft for Windows 7 users, at which point they basically say Windows 7 has reached its end of life. I would recommend to you, as I myself am not going to do, do not apply those final updates from Microsoft. Just avoid them. Because, you know, if they're going to sneak something nasty in, that's when they're going to do it. So, uh Whatever updates you got up to this point in time, just say that's all good, that's all fine, and I'm not ap applying any more Windows updates. I'm not going to let them sneak something dirty in on me on the last minute. So just uh, ignore or set your uh, your updates off, and uh, I, 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 it's just my recommendation. I'm not telling you what you got to do or not do, but if you're still on the Windows 7 as this machine here is, uh, I'm going to say don't, don't, don't do that. All right. Yeah, a good upstanding citizen would never believe this happened. And they would think that, well, this guy's a cop, or woman actually, is a cop, so she deserves all this money every year. Because, you know, uh, shooting people in the back is highly stressful. And she's a cop, and you got to salute the blue, or whatever the hell that phrase is. 
post it over here on the freethoughtproject.com on January 2nd. Cop will get $57,000 a year in disability for the stress of shooting an unarmed man in the back. Yep, Dear Brown, Wisconsin. If you need an example of the ridiculous police state circus that is the land of the free, the following case should do. A former Deer Brown police officer, charged with a felony for shooting an unarmed man in his back, will receive $57,000 a year tax-free in disability payments for the stress. Oh, poor woman. She endured after trying to kill a man on his way home from work. Well, what the hell is he doing going to work? What, what kind of person is that? Former Deer Brown officer Devon Kraber, 30, has been collecting the payments for nearly a year and, according to reports, could receive them for the rest of her natural life. According to Kramer, the aftermath of the shooting and the subsequent trial for aggravated battery for shooting Manuel Br Burnley Jr. was just too much for her little braid to handle, and she will need compensation in the form of 57000 tax-free dollars every single year for the rest of her life. Yes, Kramer is only 30 years old. If she lives the average life expectancy of 80, she can expect to receive nearly $3 million if it is not adjusted for inflation for shooting an unarmed man in the back. During her trial last year, Kramer was not convicted of aggravated battery because the jury was hung. Instead of seeking retrial, Milwaukee County District Attorney John Chisholm said his office would not retry the case. The news of getting away with attempted murder after being on paid vacation for two years was apparently way, way, way too much for Kramer to handle. So she resigned on July 9th, filing for disability three days prior, contending the stress of shooting, the shooting and its aftermath had left her unable to work as a police officer, according to the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Oh, poor woman, poor woman. Just how unnecessary was it to shoot Manuel Brandley is the fact that started over a bus fare dispute. On March 14, 2016, Burnley was escorted off a Milwaukee County bus after the driver claimed he was being loud and unruly while arguing over a bus fare. By chance, the bus driver waved over uh, two cops, one of whom happened to be Kramer. After the officers escorted him off the bus, they threw Burnley to the ground. They attempted to place him in handcuffs, Without warning, as Birdley lay face down on the ground waiting to be cuffed, Kramer pulled out her service pistol and shot the unarmed man in the back. He's laying face down on the ground. He's waiting to be handcuffed, and she shoots him in the back. Much of the incident was captured on video, showing exactly what happened. The officer on the scene, Michael other officer on the scene, Michael Lehman, would later testify that he heard no threats from Burnley. He also stated at that time uh, that Burnley, uh, that at no time did Burnley attempt to attack the officers when Kramer attempted to murder him. Prior to his interaction with the police that fateful day, Burnley had never been in trouble with the police before. He had no criminal record and was merely on his way home from work when the arguably innocent unarmed man was shot in the back by a trigger-happy, jackbooted thug. As the journal reports, Burnley, now 28, uh, was hospitalized for 12 days and lost part of a lung. The bullet remains in his body. He sued Kramer and the village of Brown Deer in March. Now, after taxpayers were held liable in a settlement to the victim, because the victimizer had a badge... Taxpayers will shell out $4,800 every month for her for the rest of her life. And we refer to this process as justice in the land of the free. Yeah.
That's justice for you. That's justice. <laughs> all you can do is laugh. Well, that's all I can do. All right. Some of y'all may recall uh, at some point um, I talked about this guy uh, up 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 here in New Mexico. His name is Forrest Fenn. And Forrest Fenn was a rich, uh, fairly well-off guy. And, and he took a chest of gold and jewels uh, and, and other valuable type stuff, and he buried that chest somewhere up here in the hills, basically in the foothills of uh, of the Colorado uh, mountains, mountain range, which is still in in New Mexico, in the New Mexico region. It could be like right there at the border of Colorado, New Mexico. Either way, it's been up there for a long time, and he's put out clues, various clues in various ways, telling people where they could go to find this treasure. And it's been a while. Uh, it's been 10 years, something like that. Uh, I think I think about 10 years that uh, since Forrest Fenn put this treasure up there, and he's been giving out clues all along. Well, one guy uh, that's been decided he wanted to go out and, 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 and find this treasure... He couldn't find it. He couldn't find it. And so he decided the best move for him was just to go ahead and sue Forrest Fenn because he couldn't find it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this guy, great, grateful, I mean, uh, gracious enough to go ahead and bury $3 million worth of gold and gems and other wonderful stuff is now being sued by this, quote, treasure hunter for one and a half million dollars uh, because the, the treasure hunter says the art dealer, Forrest Fenn, gave misleading clues to the three million dollar chest of gold uh, that he, he, he hid in the Rocky Mountains. So, I, I don't know what the guy, did he want a map to the, the treasure? Uh, I mean, misleading clues, they're clues. you you got to figure them out. That's the way these things work. But no, it didn't work that well for this guy. He didn't like it. David Harold Hansen of Colorado Springs is seeking $1.5 million in damages. He claims Fenn gave misleading clues to the location. He said, uh, Fenn says he hid the chest of gold and jewels in the Rocky Mountains in 2010. At least four people have met their deaths while searching for the treasure because they were morons. And he told people, don't go up there and look for this stuff in winter. Going in winter will surely do you no good. <laughs> you will harm yourself. Don't go up there unprepared. It's in a remote frickin' area. Don't try and, and go out there if you don't know what you're doing. Th this is not for the meek. This is not for, for the ill-equipped. This is not for the dipshits. Many people apparently doubt that the treasure is real, but Fenn continues to insist that it is. I'm sure it's real. I'm sure it's out there. Um, but come on, suing the guy. Ah, oh, just crazy. The federal lawsuit filed on Monday of uh, December 6th, week, the week of December 6th. That's when this was posted on the Daily Mail, December 6th. Um, in the U.S. District Court of New Mexico, accuses Fenn, who's now 88 years old, of providing misleading clues. <laughs> Reached by phone on Thursday, Fenn told the Daily Mail he had not yet received a copy of the lawsuit. I don't want to comment except to say the treasure is still hidden where I hid it 10 years ago. Fenn declined to elaborate on what kind of treasure is inside the hidden chest or to speculate on its value but he has previously said it contains 22 pounds of gold, jewels, and other precious items. In the lawsuit, the Colorado Springs resident, uh, David Harold Hansen, claims that he was on track to find the hidden treasure, but said Fenn misdirected him with those clues that didn't give him an exact map on how to get there. The lawsuit offers little in the way of further explanation, and Hansen uh, did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Hansen is seeking one and a half million dollars in damages, explaining the suit is half of the lowest publicized value of the treasure. Over the year, Fenn's treasure hunt has exploded in popularity, driving thousands of fortune seekers into the rugged Rockies 
and fueling endless speculation, online speculation about the meaning of his clues. And there are, there's big threads in various discussion boards about what each of his clues means. And of course, people, you know, they're not going to go out there and tell you exactly what they think, because if they actually believe they have the uh, inside scoop on a particular clue, they're not going to let everybody else have it. <laughs> oh, I had several motives, uh, Fenn told Daily Mail last year in an interview with the New Mexico estate. First of all, we were going into a recession. Lots of people losing their jobs. I wanted to give some people hope. Uh, despair was written all over newspaper headlines. And secondly, we're a fat-ass society. Uh, he says overweight. But I think not only in this country, but the world, says Fenn, who ran a successful Santa Fe art gallery with his wife for 17 years. So I wanted to get kids away from their electronic gadgets and out into the sunshine and into the mountains, hiking, fishing, picnicking, and anything but the couch. Get out of the game room. Yeah. And in cryptic poem, he in the, which is which is posted here, you can read his poem that's got a bunch of clues into in it. Uh, in the cryptic, addition to the cryptic poem, uh, the, the poem is is uh, in the like map. He's got a map in this poem there. Uh, hints in his memoir, Fenn has let few details slip over the years, saying the treasure is at least 8.25 miles north of Santa Fe, and that it is above an elevation of 5,000 feet. That's a lot of area. <laughs> Key elements mentioned in the poem were warm waters halt, the blaze, canyon down, home of brown, all of which are open to interpretation by searchers who have traced uh, them to landmarks across Colorado, New Mexico, Montana, and Wyoming. Uh, one of the major clues is that it's a location that was reachable by man, 79 years old which was Forrest's age when he hid the chest. And he's quick to point out that he's never said it's buried. Instead, he emphasizes that it's hidden. Could be anywhere. Could be in a tree. Could be in a building. You don't know. Anyway, uh, there, there's more to the story, and the maps are here. and uh, It's very interesting. But who this douchebag is thinking he can sue somebody for burying treasure and, and saying, it's up here, here's some clues, go find it, and not giving him a map to exactly where it's at. Well, <laughs> mm. all right, all right. A little more recent and uh, current to today's topics, I guess. Uh, January 3rd, so a mere 10 days ago. Posted on the mind com by Emma Fila. Fila, I don't know if you say it, that's how you're saying your name. Points out that no, Iraq did not attack the embassy in the U.S. embassy in Baghdad. On December 31st, 31st, 31, Iraqis stormed the U.S. embassy in protest against U.S. airstrikes. Protest against U.S. airstrikes in Iraq and Syria, which killed 25 people and wounded more than 50. The United States and Iran are currently engaged in a tit-for-tat conflict, which attacks, con uh, which attacks conducted every couple of days injure and kill each other's nationals, a situation that is not unusual for the two countries. However, the U.S. significantly escalated tensions, when on January 2nd, Iran's most powerful and well-respected military leader, General Qassem Soleimani, was assassinated in a drone strike at the Baghdad International Airport. Yes, the United States put out a drone strike on a public airport. They sent drones to bomb a public airport. <laughs> On Thursday night, World War III began trending on various social media platforms, but it became quickly apparent that many Americans, whether cheering on the murder of Soleimani or not, were largely ignorant to the recent developments leading up to this brazen act of war. 
On December 31st, Iraqis stormed the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, the capital of Iraq, torching its outer fence in protest against deadly airstrikes conducted by the U.S. military, which targeted facilities controlled by Kataib Hezbollah in both Iraq and Syria. On December 29, strikes carried out by the U.S., which killed 25 people and wounded more than 50, were in response to the death of an American contractor as the result of a rocket attack on an Iraqi military base on December 27th. The U.S. claimed that more than 30 rockets were fired in Friday's strike, so that also injured four U.S. service members and two members in the Iraqi security forces, but has offered zero proof that Iran was responsible. In December, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo repeatedly blamed Iranian-backed forces for attacks on bases in Iraq. Pompeo warned Iran that any attacks by the country or their proxies uh, would be answered with a decisive U.S. response if American citizens or its allies were harmed. And the U.S. officials have been warning of possible attacks by Iran on U.S. forces since early December. Meanwhile, Iran, along with both China and Russia, began their first ever joint naval drills, which took place in the Indian Ocean and the Gulf of Oman, December 27th through December 31st. China announced the drills on Thursday. Of the drills, Jonathan Ayal, Associate Director at the Re Royal United Institute, said, This is a carefully calculated exercise in which all three participants are winners. Iran gets to claim its regional power. Russia demonstrates its role as a key actor in the Middle East. And China can show its global naval power. The strategic message is that these are countries uh, are these are the countries shaping events in the Middle East. The United States don't like that. They don't like that at all. Tensions between the Iran and the U.S. have been increasing ever since Trump formally reneged on the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the JCPOA, also known as the Iran Nuclear Deal, in May of 2018. In what was a scandal in itself after Iran was repeatedly certifiable, certifiably compliant with all of the terms of the JCPOA. Wendy Sherman, a former Obama era undersecretary for political air affairs, uh, blames Trump's withdrawal from the, anyway, you get the idea. This, what they said happened. What they said caused this big attack over there, uh, and killing and the murder of this guy. It didn't happen. It never happened. It's a load of crap. It's BS. <laughs> Moving on. <clears throat> oh, God. All right. Courthousenews.com, December 6, 2019. The Department of Homeland Security retreats on facial screening of U.S. citizens. Yeah, the, the DHS was going to require that U.S. citizens, um, if they traveled abroad, which could mean Mexico or Canada, or even Puerto Rico, anywhere outside of the official borders of the United States, uh, would have to submit to facial recognition technology, either on departure or return. But the department said on Thursday that it has no plans to expand facial recognition to U.S. citizens at this time. Uh, I added that part. A spokesman said that DHS will delete the idea from its regulatory agenda where privacy advocates spotted it. Uh, the advocates and lawmakers accused DHS of reneging on repeated promises not to force American citizens to be photographed leaving or entering the U.S., a process that is required for foreign visitors. Uh, some Senator Markey from Massachusetts uh, called the administrative retreat a victory for every single American who flies on planes. And let me just say this about this. Just because they're not telling you they're doing it doesn't mean they're not doing it. 
I guarantee you they're doing it. <laughs> now, for them to say, oh, we're not going to have photos of people coming and going. No, we wouldn't do that. Maybe they won't have you pose in front of a camera as they do, but they are. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, there are many photos and videos of you coming and going uh, on your international flights or other forms of travel. Uh, don't you doubt it for a second. Now, what does that actually mean to you? I don't know. They know who you are anyway. They got photos and uh, pictures of you, and they got, you're carrying your tracking device with you. That thing is called a cell phone. Yeah, that, that's on your body at all time. They know who you are. They know where you are. Uh, and they know how long you've been there. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know what one additional photo uh, there at the DHS place is going to do one way or another. But uh, they got people upset by saying they were going to do it. And now they say, well, you know, we were just kidding. <laughs> oh god alright the freethoughtproject.com posted December 31st 2019 Cr cops proudly brag about terrorizing the poor during the Christmas during Christmas with a homeless quilt homeless quilt and what the homeless quilt is, uh, just to describe it before I get into the text of the article there. They stole a bunch of signs from homeless people that were, you know, saying, hey, you know, I'm homeless, maybe throw me a dollar or something. Uh, they stole a bunch of signs from these homeless folks. And they taped them together. And they're holding them up saying, this is a quilt, a homeless quilt. Yeah, ha, 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 ha. we're so funny. Mobile, Alabama. Two mobile panhandling prevention police officers, which, why do you even have that, uh, uh, made international headlines and drew criticism for their perceived insensitivity this Christmas. They fashioned what they called a quilt out of many panhandling signs they had confiscated from homeless people. According to WKRG, the controversy began last week. A mobile police officer posted the picture to Facebook in a post that accompanied the uh, the picture, the officer wrote in part, Hope you enjoy your homeless quilt. Officers with the 4th Precinct took the panhandling signs and either glued or sewed them together uh, and, and, and while standing beside the so-called quilt, had their picture taken. Yet what started out as a cruel joke mushroomed into an intentional outrage. Now it has ended with Mobile Chile, Chief of Police issuing an apology, even though panhandling is illegal in Mobile. Chief uh, Lawrence Baptiste said, I take full responsible for making sure we have had an aggressive stance on dealing with panhandlers because it impacts the safety of our communities. Homelessness, we, we, we do not intend our police... Uh, we do not intend to police our way out of homelessness. The safety of their citizens. Somebody asking for a dollar to buy a sandwich or something, you know. That, that, that impacts the safety of their citizens. Intimating that the embarrassment the police department has received on social media and in the press, Batiste issued uh, what can only be characterized as a, quote, sincere, unquote, apology. Once again, I'd like to apologize for the insensitive behavior of the officers. Their actions are nowhere indicative of who we are as a department. Right! <laughs> Going further, Chief Batiste issued the following written statement, written statement, which reads, in part, as a police department entrusted with serving and protecting our community, we offer our sincerest apology for the insensitive gesture of a Facebook post by two of our officers where they are holding up a homeless quilt made of panhandling signs. Ugh. They're disgusting. These things, these cretins, they are disgusting. They, they just feel so superior 
to those homeless people that they got to go out there, steal their property, uh, put it, mo paste it all together, and make a mockery of the homeless people. They're just so brave. You should be proud that these guys are out there keeping you safe from starving people looking for a dollar. Disgusting. <laughs> just freaking disgusting. <laughs> all right. On that note, and all many previous notes, and future notes, and notes from way in the past, and all that such thing, I, I suggest that those of you that maybe don't quite get it, uh, don't quite understand the ideas of anarcho-capitalism, voluntarism, voluntarism, agor ag agorism, uh, the, the ideas of just voluntary interaction with other people instead of forced, coercive interactions with the state. I suggest that you read, and you can do this absolutely for free, some of the writings of Murray and Rothbard. Now, over here on Mises Institute, Mises.org, are a bunch of his books. And you can read them for free. You can download them as EPUB or PDF. You can read them online. Murray Rothbard. I consider myself a man that is in the Rothbardian vein of thinking. I consider myself an anarcho-capitalist. Yeah. And, 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 uh, Murray, Mr. Rothbard is was is one of the uh, foremost voices uh, on 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 these matters. And if you're looking at this uh, list of books, there that I mean, there's, there's many books in this list in this reading list. I would suggest that you start off with the Anatomy of the State book. Um, it, it's <laughs> it, <laughs> if that don't get you there. I'm not sure what will. Uh, there's, you know, plenty of other good writings, like Sanders Sponer, for one. Um, uh, plenty of the, uh, of the stuff by modern-day writer Larkin Rose. Uh, uh, a lot of the stuff by Ayn Rand. Uh, even though she was anti-anarchist, um, she still uh, told you many of the evils of, of having the state there controlling your life. Um, so, I, you know, I <laughs> just... Oh, man. All right, let me get a little sip of water here. <clears throat> Gooberzill is asking in the chat, what do you expect from city cops? Do you think it's city cops that makes a difference? You don't think that uh, uh, your county cops, your state cops, your federal cops all do the same? You don't think the military uh, would do the same? Uh, anybody charged with um, enforcing all of the laws written on the books and somebody writes a law saying homelessness or panhandling is illegal. Of course they're going to do that. All right, this is an important article for those of you that um, you don't like, you don't want to be on sugar because you know sugar has a lot of bad effects, although most of your foods are going to have some processed sugars in it anyway. Um, but you know that the, the, the processed sugars could possibly have some bad effects, uh, such as it feeds cancer. Um, and so you, you switch to something called stevia, which is a, a natural, a, pu a purely natural uh, sweetener that you can use uh, in, in place of the processed sugars that you get. However, there's a problem. There's a big problem with that. As posted on Mercola.com on uh, December 6, 2019, Buyer beware. GMO stevia is everywhere. And it's approved. Yes, yeah, stevia, a perennial shrub native to South America, has a long history, very long, uh, thousands of years, of use as a natural sweetener. Steviol glycosides, whatever, uh, including rebo something asides, a D and M are what provide the sweet taste, a Reb A being the sweetest. 
despite hundreds of years of safe use of stevia, the U.S. FDA has labeled stevia leaf as a crude and crude stevia extracts as unsafe food additives, granting gross status to certain high purity stevia gly glycosides only. However, genetically engineered versions of stevia have also received the green light for widespread unregulated use in food. Cargill, the huge corporation's ever sweet, contains Reb D and Reb M made from genetically engineered yeast fermentation, yet it is marked as non artificial. <sighs> FDA. Stevia, yeah, okay, anyway, I just want you all to be aware of this, because, uh, you know, anytime there's something good, something natural, something positive, the government goes and takes it and says, you can't use this. There, there's no patent on it. The FDA doesn't doesn't like that if, if some of the people that are, well, most of the people that run places like the FDA, all, all the other government agencies, are those that come from the very corporations they're supposed to be regulating. Uh, and, and, <laughs> and those people are, still have a, a, a dashed, dotted line back to the, the corporations that they work for because they know they're not always going to be, uh, you know, like a... a director at the FDA or one of the sub people at the FDA or uh, any of those other agencies. So they still got a dash line back to that corporation and they're doing that corporation's bidding uh, in the name of what they call public safety. And it's absolutely the opposite of public safety uh, it, it is for the, the total profit of which, whichever industry and or corporation that they are working for or were working for and will work for in the future. So when you when you buy your your stevia, make sure you're you're getting the real stuff. Um you know, stevia is great. It, it's it's <sighs> I I don't mind sugar, you know. I, I buy the raw sugar anyway. Uh, I'm not getting the processed sugar, but uh I I like sugar. It, it, to me it's a good substance. Um, I'm not getting cancer. I I I, I dose with uh, with baking soda every day, uh, so I'll never get cancer. It's just not going to happen. I may get something else, but that's not going to be it. Um, and, and if you do that, if you do dose with uh, one one teaspoon, one teaspoon of baking soda each day, and, and a cup of water, a glass of water. I actually put it in my Ayurvedic uh, copper uh, canister that I use to drink water out of. Um, <laughs> which is a whole other area uh, that, that you might want to look into for improving your, your health, uh, the Ayurvedics and, and, and the copper vessels that you can buy. Um, <laughs> but I, I put, I put the, 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 the uh, baking soda in there, and I, I drink that every, every morning. Uh, so, um, but, but back to the stevia. If you want to use the stevia, just make sure, you know, it's not one of these GMO, ge gen genetically engineered, derived substances, and that it's the real stuff. And and, and you can buy it as a, as a raw product. Um, they're, they're to say that, that it shouldn't be in the foods, but come on. Um, uh, you can't trust them. You can't trust the government. Put, put that tinfoil hat back on. Put your tinfoil hats back on. <laughs> you need to keep those things in place. <laughs> yes. Anyway, there, there's stuff in this article that talk, talks about, uh, you know, where you can find the real stevia um, and and uh, how to avoid the fake stevia. Um, talking about the biotech companies gain power by taking over government. Uh, yeah, all, all these various things. Uh, good information in this article. I, I could go through it all for you, but really, really, this is information you want to you want to keep in your uh, bookmark folder under your uh, health t 
topics and things like that. Um, don't be duped by the industry shells. Do not. Uh, yeah. So, um, there you go. All right. <laughs> and we'll close. We'll close on this just because I found it humorous. Um, December 26, 2019, on APNews.com. North Carolina couple calls 911 on a vacuum thought to be an intruder. Twas the night of Christmas at a North Carolina house. No creature should have been stirring, not even a mouse. But a Forsyth County couple awoke with a fright as something was moving about in their house in the night. They dashed to their closet in hidden fear, dialing 911 with a sensitive ear. Responding sheriff deputies searched the home and found a robot vacuum alone. The source of the scare had quickly been sorted, WGHP-TV reported. The robot had seemingly started and gotten stuck. Its beeping and banging made an audible muck. Homeowner Thomas Millen said the vacuum name Harry was new. They'd had it for days, maybe just two. He said it's not it's not better to be sorry than safe, and he'd call 911 again, even if making a mistake. <laughs> uh, so, um, to me, I'd say these two are lucky to still be alive. A lot of times people call 911 and and the outcome goes a different direction. And the, and the people that called 911 are soon found dead, uh, shot by the police that came to rescue them, save them. And, and, and also, let me just say, if you're so scared of a little couple banging noises somewhere in your house that you're going to run and hide in a closet, I don't even know what to say to somebody like you. If that's, <laughs> you gotta go run and hide in that closet over, overhearing some noises in your house. What kind of person are you? What are you? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in here to the second grim leftovers of 2020. I'll be back again next Monday with another fine edition of the Grim Leftovers show. That'll be episode 55, Double Nickels. Uh, I will also be back on Friday night, minus the Moose Girl, on the uh, Freakers Ball slash Balls to the Wall show. Uh, so anyway, check out the schedule on reallibertymedia.com for all the rest of the shows. Uh, Flash and Grammy are on tomorrow at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. 3, p, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, with the uh, In a Perfect World show. Um, anyway, yeah, like I said, check the schedule there on reallybeautymedia.com. Thanks, y'all, so much for being part of Really Read Media, talking to the chat, listening to the show. I appreciate it greatly. How you doing out there, Sullivan? Shh. <laughs> Peace.